What's good, Josh Boy Ross? Back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out Randy Orton return leaked. Fans angry at WWE. Ronda Rousey close to leaving and other WWE wrestling news. Now I have been hearing some rumors that Randy Orton is a uh, um potentially gonna be at SummerSlam this year's SummerSlam as a surprise appearance I don't know we will see but we're gonna check this out man SummerSlam I'm filming this the night before SummerSlam so uh it should be interesting to see what's gonna happen with that situation but uh we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support didn't mean to go full screen uh link to the original video down below let's get right into this one going on guys it is wrestlemia here back with some more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including wwe really wanted kenny omega randy Orton could be returning at SummerSlam. fans angry at wwe for this sheamus slams wwe creative Tony Khan doesn't give a damn about women's wrestling. Ronda mm. Rousey close to leaving WWE. A huge WWE return at SummerSlam and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Now our first story looks like WWE really wanted Kenny Omega. Now, Kenny Omega recently announced that he's staying in AEW, but what if the cleaner had opted to go to WWE instead? That would have Dave been Meltzer interesting. Is reporting in this week's Wrestling Observer that Omega was number one on the company's most wanted list. Wow. Or would have been in a great position in an open market, so Khan must have made a strong deal to get them to stay without even strongly playing the WWE card. But what if Omega had signed with the WWE? Meltzer discussed the WWE's plans for Kenny saying that one person with knowledge of WWE's interests has noted to us that while Omega was top talent who would have been used as a top guy in the mix with the likes of Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar level guys, that because of long term physical durability they believed that Rollins as the role of the best in ring wrestler in the company had more time in the role than Omega would have. Mm. Also noted that Omega's past injuries, not to mention surgeries, made AEW a better choice due to its lighter schedule than the WWE. Next up, Randy Orton. That would have been interesting. I don't know if his style would work in WWE. Like how he wrestles, his style of wrestling, I don't know. Because WWE, they're more on the safer side for the most part of things. Um, that would have been interesting. That would have been interesting. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Would y'all be okay if if that would have happened? Would y'all been okay with Kenny Omega being in WWE? How would y'all felt about that? Is in Detroit. Now we've had some good news and we've had some bad news surrounding Randy Orton. Bad news is that he still hasn't been cleared by WWE, or so we know of. Plus yeah. there are no creative plans for him. But again, like we mentioned before, this could all be a ruse, as PWInsider.com has confirmed that Randy Orton is in Detroit, the home of SummerSlam. No. Could this indicate that we're going to get a huge return at SummerSlam? Maybe. If so, could he interfere in the Cody vs. Brock match, setting up a huge feud between him and Cody Rhodes? There's just so much storytelling there. Yeah, The for highest sure. paid tag team ever. Definitely, um, if he does make a return, I, I would hope, obviously, it's after the match with Brock. And then they can set up something with him and and Randy. If this if if that's how you bring him back, SummerSlam feud with uh with uh with Cody after Cody is dispatched Brock, I'm okay with it. I am okay with it. The story is there, so I'm all for it. Uh, the recent news of the Elite re-upping with AEW has led to the group's members Did hear giving about various this. reasons for staying with the promotion they helped found. These include opportunity to work a reduced schedule as well as a wish to help AEW grow further. In the case of the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson, the tag team is being paid a hefty sum to stay in AEW. Damn. Dave Meltzer is reporting that the Bucks agents Barry Bloom had told the Young Bucks that as far as he knew, this was the highest guarantee any tag team in pro wrestling history had Damn. ever gotten. And that would include the highest contracts for Kevin Nash and Scott Hall in WCW, although they're obviously comparing a 2023 dollar figure with the late 90s in yeah. straight dollars doesn't mean that much given how much inflation has changed the value going that far back. Facts. As far as Hall and Nash go, it's worth noting that the wrestling legend has it that WCW paid the outsiders a bonus when the company discovered a glitch in Hall and Nash's contract that could have allowed them to return to WWF at the height of the New World Order's popularity. 
In addition, Damn. both stars enjoyed a favored nation clause that meant that if someone was Recipe signed Scott to WCW Hall. at a higher base salary than they had been, their salary would have been increased to the same level. What would you guys think of the Bucks' payday? Are they worth that much? Let us know in the comments down below. I mean, to AEW, yes. They, they have a huge fan base. To AEW, of course. You let them walk, you, you let pretty much a huge fan a huge fan base that loves uh the young bucks you you kind of alienate them so nah tony khan definitely had to appease them um uh, but that can also backfire on you too because uh it's not too many other teams in that division that's been built up outside of like ftr you know what i'm saying so they definitely need to find a way to build up some more tag teams to get people invested in them you know Outside of the ones that they already have, the few, I think they need to definitely enhance their tag team division. Next up, fans angry at WWE for this. Oh, what Why was Becky about? Lynch versus Trish Stratus oh, kicked off SummerSlam? One. And what did the superstars think about the move? Despite rumors that the match was postponed due to an injury, Fightful Select is reporting. Instead, we're told that WWE has been adamant about limiting the number of matches and the run times for PLE shows. And I am all for it. I am which caused some matches that were being built for the show to be moved elsewhere. Those we spoke to said that on SummerSlam, the match would have been severely limited by time yeah. and the decision was made to put it on a future Raw instead. Consideration was also given to moving it back to WWE Payback. By now, you've heard likely reports that the WWE wants to give its Slim Jim-sponsored SummerSlam yep. Battle Royal enough time to make Slim Jim feel that they're getting their money's worth. Yeah, they, yeah. Once they added that, they, that was all monetary, so they possibly could have been their match. But nah, and I believe Slim Jim has offered them one of the biggest partnerships that any company has done with WWE ever. So yeah, that's a no-brainer. And once again, I know some of y'all disagree with me uh, when I talked about it on my preview prediction saying me personally, I don't think it should be on the show. Me personally, because I, I, and that's just, I just don't care about the feud. And it's not even that they, it's bad. It's just, I don't care. I, I think, Trish's character, her promo work since she's been back as a heel has just been abysmal for me. I just don't care. And I, I don't, to be honest with you. So that's why I say I, I don't I don't think it should be on the show, in my personal opinion. If it was on the show, I wouldn't trip or whatnot. But I, I, I do think it, you know, with the matches we have now and the storylines we have with all the matches now. I think all the matches that are on the show outside of that battle royal or whatnot, I, if anything, I probably would have liked the United States Championship match to be on there in place of the battle royal if that was going to be the case, if I had to choose. But all the storylines and what's going on right now are more interesting and deserve to be on the show over the Trish and, uh, and Becky situation. That's just my personal opinion. Just storyline-wise, those have a uh they have a, they have a greater impact for me so but i know a few of you guys have been saying y'all would have preferred uh trish and lita being i'm uh, not trish and lita uh, trish and becky being on the show so according to dave Meltzer, wwe announced their new partnership with slim jim and claimed that it was the biggest sponsorship deal in company history with the battle royal being the first number of custom integrations at wwe major shows which will include the upcoming survivor series in chicago as well as the 2024 royal rumble and both uh, nights of wrestlemania yeah nonetheless they, they and the Stratus aren't happy them. at least according to fightful we're told that neither women was thrilled with the adjustment which of came course into focus in days before their the thing I, I, they have every right to be upset because i'm sure they they've been wanting to you know maybe finish the story at SummerSlam, and they've been building towards it so i get it i i understand that me personally i just i'm not losing any sleep that is not on the show either so the raw match was set up well some fans weren't happy about this as one wrote becky lynch versus trish stratus got removed from the SummerSlam card because there wasn't enough time yet they're doing a meaningless battle royal for la knight and kid rock performance which no one asked for and here's the thing i get and that's a fair point that's a very very fair point and i can't get mad at that i don't really care about the kid rock performance the only reason why i care about the battle royal is for la night that's that's really it that's really it we're just trying to get a moment for la night so i get that i get it that's fair but at the same time if that's the case 
then shit, you might as well put the United States Championship on on the show. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. I, I completely understand that is a fair point to make. Me personally, I rather just watch LA Knight in this meaningless battle royal to get that huge pop in that interaction than watching this Becky and Trish fight. So. Another rope, Becky and Trish getting pulled when their feud has lasted for months. We've been telling y'all WWE still doesn't care about women or their stories. Now, while this is speculation, Trish Stratus, who is not only a WWE Hall of Famer, but an industry icon, has to wonder why she came back to work a high-profile program with a top superstar at one of the WWE's biggest PLEs, only to be set aside for a battle royal. Yep. You think they deserve better? Let us know in the comments down below. I, I just wish the feud was a little bit better, in my personal opinion. I, I do wish the feud was better. I and mean, I can I get it. It's just me. It's like, ah, uh, I'm not going to lose no sleep over it. So, I don't know. We'll see. Hello. <laughs> we'll Next see up, how Sheamus play slams out. WWE creative. If you're unhappy with how the WWE has been booking Sheamus, you're not alone. Just ask the Celtic warrior himself. He recently spoke with the Daily Star, laying into the WWE's creative department for wasting the incredible momentum he was riding after his epic bout against Intercontinental Champion Gunther and last year's Clash at the I Castle. I did see this tweet. What I was upset about and what really bothered me was the creative after that. I came out of with that with so much organic momentum and this it was just your... wasted. It didn't go anywhere. A 45-year-old wrestler said he was fine with losing to Gunther, but he's disappointed with WWE's failure to capitalize on the fans' support. Sadly, Sheamus seems to have fallen down the WWE's pecking order, going yeah. from being a contender for the Intercontinental Championship to a superstar who all too frequently puts over talent. Yeah, the unfortunately, his momentum after Clash at the Castle was just ridiculous, and they they didn't capitalize. Maybe they get, they could have did something. Maybe probably put the they could have maybe put the United States Championship on them. I don't know, but yeah, they 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 didn't really have nothing for him after that. Outside of his uh, match at WrestleMania with uh, Drew in inserted into it and Gunther, they didn't have much for him. He also pointed out how things have played out after his triple threat match between himself, Drew McIntyre, and Gunther. It was a dead end, just like with WrestleMania. Drew went away because he was injured. I was ready to go and then just nothing. There were no avenues and nowhere to go and that's frustrating. I did the War Games thing after Clash at the Castle, but that was shit. That's how I felt, though others may have felt differently. Damn. In addition, Seamus felt that he felt bitter that he was left off Money in the Bank, although he was happy that fellow brawling brute member Butch participated in the men's Money in the Bank match. When it comes to the pay-per-views and you have the part-timers coming into the limelight, that stings a little bit. What do you course. guys think of Seamus' comments? Let us know in the comments down below. It's warranted. It's warranted. They, they haven't really kept his momentum going, and he hasn't really been in anything substantial as of late. So... I mean, he's going to be in the Slim Jim Battle Royal for SummerSlam, but he's not winning that. The only person that makes sense to win that is LA Knight, so. Next up, a wrestler claims Tony Khan doesn't give a damn about the women's wrestling. I've been hearing but speaking some of women's stuff about this too. Possibly being disgruntled, it looks like the ongoing criticism of AEW's women's division has reached AEW president Tony Khan. Noted indie wrestler Lafisto has been outspoken in her criticism of AEW, including discussing how she was mistreated during a short stay in the company. She recently tweeted, Had a one-hour phone call with a current AEW talent. The woman who actually addressed the problems I did today were the ones sent home by Tony Khan. There was a meeting to shoot on Thunder Rosa and Thunder Rosa that Khan attended. Before leaving, he reminded them that their segments were the lowest. When some girls arranged Damn. a meeting to talk about Baker's crew, one of them ran into Brit to let her know. The girls that wanted to address the problem were the one punished. Damn. Things didn't get better, they got worse. She went further blaming Khan for how the AEW's women's division is being booked. The legitimate wrestlers believe Tony doesn't give a damn about women's wrestling and feel like they're going back to the Divas era. AEW's mm. women's division had a troubled start with the promotion lacking a solid core of top talent. However, the women's roster has seen many exciting stars improve while the company's also added outsiders, or in this case outcasts of Soraya, Ruby Soho and Tony Storm. What do you think of our criticisms? Are they warranted? Let us know in the comments down below. Yeah, their women's division is... I mean, it's up there with the problems with WWE's. I think it's a little bit worse because I think there's more star power, obviously, on WWE side of things, but it's not too good. I don't know, man. They need to do something because their segments usually are the lowest rated. Like, no one really hearing that much like it's i don't know they got to do something i don't know what they need to do but they got to do something because 
And it, obviously, there's some dissension backstage. I don't know what's going on. They got to get that sorted out. Tony Khan, he got to get that sorted out. Or maybe you don't even care. I don't know. <laughs> That's, Hello. That could be a thing. Next up, why no stipulation for Cody versus Brock 3? I definitely want to know about this. Is going to add a stipulation for SummerSlam's Cody versus Brock Part 3? Well, according to Fightful, the WWE has no plans for a stipulation match. And while there was talk of a stipulation being added, including a dog collar match, the site reports no stipulation was considered heavily. There were also rumors of a Texas bull rope match, which we had suggested previously, which would have been a good way for Cody to win without Lesnar having to take a pinfall. Yes. However, the WWE may feel a conclusive finish is the better way to go. Fans shouldn't rule out a last minute change either, but at this point, it sounds like the rubber match will be a traditional match. Which, to me, that's why this feud has been lackluster, in my opinion, as well. Uh, the only reason why it's on there, on the show... Uh, it's because it's Cody and Brock. They're fucking mega stars. But um, this this feud has definitely been lackluster for sure. It, these matches have been just regular matches, and they've been good though. I'm not gonna say they haven't. They've been good, and I think this one hopefully continues that trend. But the feud itself just it it has not been hitting as it should. We still don't know why Brock attacked Cody. We'll probably never know why, other than he gets paid to beat up people. As we already know, um, I just feel like it's 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 not there. You know, Cody getting beat up every damn well, not every week, but getting beat up for months, only to come out there to try to shake the dude's hand that's been beating you up for months. It's fucking ridiculous. It's, it's dumb. Just get this over with. If Cody doesn't come out there and soundly beat Brock, and we don't need no fluke roll up, nothing, just come out there, hit the crossroads 20 times and call it a fucking day, then what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know, man. Next up, Ronda Rousey close to leaving WWE. Never a rumor heard about that this. MMA rules match against Shayna Baszler at SummerSlam could be her final WWE appearance. Meltzer is reporting, it's not confirmed whether this is Rousey's last match in WWE for the time being, but her departure is coming relatively soon since they had to rush the turn angle. Things haven't been confirmed concerning just when Rousey's current WWE deal ends, but it's believed she wants to put her friend Shayna Baszler over before leaving WWE. Which As for the I'm MMA rules for. match, rumor has it that WWE still hasn't come up with the rules involved. Next up, a huge WWE return at SummerSlam? It's been a rough year for WWE superstar Bobby Roode, who has been sidelined since last June. As noted by Inside the Ropes, Roode underwent major neck fusion surgery at the end of 2022 and in May 2023, but hasn't wrestled since June of last year, losing yeah. to Omos at a WWE live event. However, PW Insider is reporting that Roode was spotted in Detroit. There has been no official update on when Roode might return to the ring, but SummerSlam's Battle Royal seems like a good spot for Bobby to return. Possibly. And finally, Shotzi's new look. But last but not least, Shotzi recently shaved her head to support her sister who is battling cancer, mm -hmm. with the WWE incorporating her buzz cut into a storyline. The WWE updated her new look on her profile page. A video was also surfaced of Shotzi wrestling at a live event and fans can see what she looks like now. Her recent yeah, menacing and some would describe it as stalking of Damage Control's Bailey, has led to speculation that her character is taking a dark turn and she may even end up working alongside Bray Wyatt. But there you have it folks, the wildest hmm. news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below. I'll see you next time. With... Interesting. But yeah, man, this is an interesting video. Y'all let me know down below how y'all feel about Trish and uh and Becky not being on the show. You know, do y'all feel like they deserve to be on there? Do y'all care or like indifferent to it? Like, oh, they're not on the show, if they are on the show, whatever. Or do y'all feel like um they they shouldn't be on the show because you're not feeling the feud or whatnot let me know down below uh how y'all feel about that also the rumors of randy orton potentially returning would y'all like him to feud with cody rose if he was to return at SummerSlam? so but looking forward to SummerSlam. Uh, i'm probably gonna drop this the day of SummerSlam, man so i'm looking forward to it make sure you guys check us out live on youtube we're gonna be doing our live stream reactions it's gonna be a great time so make sure y'all join us but i appreciate all the love and support world i don't know what that was at the end y'all just i'll see y'all later man <laughs>